Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are on the Isle of Siptar in map square E12, building a Namidian medieval castle. This video is of course a speed build, as it is a huge build with plenty to do. So without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, I started off with of course the base plate. I do indeed have a blueprint for you, and just by looking at it you can tell that this is a massive build. As with all my speed builds, I'll talk you through the building process and any difficulties or issues I encountered, the ideas and inspirations behind this build, and I'll also be including one or two little things I've learned with the new Numidian DLC that are absolutely perfect for castle builds. With this base plate, I wanted to create a large castle with a two-tier system. Towards the front and the right side of the castle, you'll find the entrance plaza, main hall, dining area, etc., and above those you will find the royal living quarters. However, towards the back of the build, as I transition from arena flooring to Namidian flooring, these will be the servants quarters, where a lot of the work to maintain and equip the castle and the soldiers within it will be undertaken. Alongside these work quarters are living areas for the servants, which will include bedrooms, a dining area, balconies and more. My inspiration for this castle was quite a simple one really. After finishing up my Namidian Stronghold build and the People of the Dragon review, I decided that I wanted to make a start on a large medieval castle. To get inspiration for this build, I simply searched up medieval German castles. Of course, there were plenty of images of the Berg Elts, but also there were quite a few castles that offered some inspiration through their incredibly attractive designs and structure. I always recommend searching real life structures for your own inspirations. I find that sites like Pinterest are always a good option, but saying that, there's nothing wrong with just plain old Google images. Looking through these images played a big part in helping me to put together a design that I was quite happy with. In retrospect, I think the design could be improved even further, and it could be made a lot tighter and more cohesive, but for a spur of the moment design, I think it works quite nicely. When it came to starting the build, things started to come together just as I expected. I've built my fair share of castles from of course stone brick, reinforced stone or arena, but Namidian just works so well. The stone is the perfect tone and texture for a castle design like this. The extra details of the wooden accents and the vaulted ceilings also play a massive part in helping to make this DLC one of the best choices, in my opinion anyway, for castle builds. Of course, the roof pieces play a huge part in this too, especially the new rooftop caps. There's been a fair few times when I've wanted to have these huge spiked rooftops rising above a build, not necessarily castles, temples and stuff as well, but until People of the Dragon, this was a relatively impossible feat outside of a few different mods. However, I honestly can't praise these rooftop caps enough. They make a perfect solution to the verticality issue that can sometimes arise with roofing. I think the only thing that would have been even better would be wedge roof pieces that rise up to a similar height of about two walls high. These pieces would end up being extremely niche, so that's probably quite a good reason why they weren't included in the building set, but such an addition would have been wonderful for wedge towers, especially in a design like this. One thing you're going to see me doing throughout the build is making my own windows. Now, obviously I'm on PC, and I am running less building placement restrictions, so I have a bit more flexibility with how I can do it. On console, if you want you can place a Namidian door frame, I would recommend on the second tile of the wall, and then place an arena door within it. This creates a fairly normal looking window, and with the iron bars of the arena door it suits the style of the castle quite well. If you're on PC and you're also using the less building placement restrictions mod, then it just gets easier. When you place down that doorway on the second tile, you can then put a Namidian crenellated wall into that gap, and then you can place the arena door into that gap, and that creates a really convincing looking window, and you'll find that the crenellated wall forms something of a small window sill on the outside as well. It's just a small little thing, you don't necessarily have to do it of course, but I think it looks really, really good. One thing I will say is that I think I could have balanced out the overall vertical climb of the build a bit better. Looking back at my source images, many of the castles have a quite clear curve when it comes to how the height is distributed. This tends to take the form of a collection of height in one specific part of the castle, or across a densely packed formation near the centre. Historically, this makes a lot of sense, 
as the tallest part of the castle would be a benefit for scouting attacks from enemy forces, and the tallest part, in the centre especially, was usually the best defended area, meaning it could serve as a safe space within the castle should it come under attack. In my design, the height distribution ends up somewhat inverted from what you'd usually expect to see, with the front and the back of the build being quite tall and then falling a bit lower in the middle. This distribution could definitely have been improved, especially if I had made the design a little bit tighter as I mentioned earlier, and included the royal quarters in a more central location, as opposed to those quarters being so heavily distributed to the right side of the castle. Overall though, I'm very pleased with how this castle came out. The best part is definitely, in my opinion anyway, the front facade of the build. It didn't end up as clean and as varied in height and shape as I'd hoped, but the shape and formation of the entrance walls and the courtyard casts a wonderfully intimidating visual that I think perfectly captures the intrinsic spirit of medieval Germanic architecture. Another thing I really like is some of the narrow corridors throughout the castle. You'll be able to see these in some of the access corridors above the entrance hall, on some of the balconies and in the servants quarters. If, like me, you watch the dev stream for the People of the Dragon DLC, you will probably have seen this feature of extremely narrow corridors before. I wasn't too enamoured with the idea initially, though having actually put them down in game, it's very different to actually walk through. As grand of a castle as this is, it makes sense that there would be small cramped pathways throughout the castle to make it easier to traverse. I also think it creates a really interesting feeling, Transitioning from massive open spaces to these tight corridors does wonders for the atmosphere in these areas, though I think it's one of those things that translates best in-game as opposed to just watching it on this video or the dev stream. If you're building something with Namidian in the future, I would greatly encourage you to give these cramped corridors a try. They are so vastly different from the usual structures you'd build, but I still really think they're worth including in a build. So I think that about covers everything I have to say for this build. As usual, I will let the rest of the building phase run and then we'll go through the finished build, so if you'd like to skip ahead you can do so by clicking on the next chapter on the play bar below. I'll be doing something a little bit different for this furnishing phase, seeing as this build is so big, rather than spending the best part of 20 minutes walking through the build, I'll instead be presenting it in a bit more of a cinematic way, similar to how I presented the Pirate Sanctuary build from a little while ago. So with that being said, enjoy the rest of the building phase, and I will see you in the furnishing phase.